So, uh, as usual, okay, usually we write the public classes, but uh, for security reason, we cannot okay have always public class. This is another reason. So we are writing public because we want to access the data which is inside. That's okay. Yeah. So this is okay. How you do it? Okay. So public class factorial. We have written the class. Inside the class, there are two components. Okay. So there's two okay functions operate uh, operate uh, operations right so these operations or functions okay are okay, okay we can say in different by different ways different name the method the function the operations are exactly the same thing okay so there are two methods okay here the the first one is the main method and the second one is the multiply numbers okay these two so uh, let's see what is there in the main okay okay because the program will start every time from here okay public static void main so the main is the keyword from where the program will start so line number 14 will okay start the program so anyway uh, string arg okay this is the argument and thereafter, okay, the line number 15 will assign a variable. Okay, so a variable, as I told you earlier, is can be considered as a box. So inside this num box variable num, we will keep five, okay, because num has assigned value, keyword five. So now num is equal to five, and it is integer type, okay then we have another variable long type factorial the name is factorial and we are going to assign this okay i mean putting inside the value of multiply number so remember now multiply number is here okay this is the another method so whatever inside multiply number will be put inside the factorial okay so whatever natija result we will get from multiply numbers okay we will put inside factorial the end of the variable so every value payment which is from the multiply number is put inside the box of factorial that's all the meaning is like this right so everything clear up to now okay so i will move further right so let's move to okay uh, let me explain and then uh, you can ask any question okay if there's some problem okay so after this okay uh, the system out okay the system class okay which is a built-in class which inside the Java program uh, compiler system okay has a method okay out system out uh, you can think it, it as object so okay so System dot out out is an object uh, which is uh, used for printing purpose. Okay, so print out. Okay, you can think like this. System out print in is an object. So the object okay has a method called print line. Okay, print line will print one line, only one line. Okay, print just line. Okay, print one line. What is that line? It is here factorial of and the num num means okay whatever is entered by the okay, uh, by the num variable so it is the value is 5 so it will put okay factorial of 5 is equal to and it will give the natija factorial okay which is coming from remember here right this one and this one is coming from multiply number which is here right so let's see what is inside the multiply number. In the multiply numbers, okay, uh, it is first declared as public static long. Okay? So it is also public and static in nature because uh, it is not going to change all the time. We cannot instantiate it. There will be no object okay, for this one. Okay, that's why we can keep it static long okay we, we expect maybe the numbers are very big so 
so that's why we assign the value log and the name of the method and the argument which is num okay the number entered by the uh, by the this one okay num this one actually okay so this num will be replaced here right inside here so this will be the same num this one okay so okay uh, we are now using the if okay if condition so in the if condition first we will check the condition that num is more than or equal to one or not so if the condition is true then the first line will run otherwise this second line will run okay so if the condition is true the line number 22 will run this one will run otherwise okay the second line if the condition fails okay then this line will run okay like this so the condition is if num is more than or equal to one then we will get from this method we will get back from this method num into multiply number okay so it is repeating itself that's why it is called iteration uh, so multiply numbers okay and num minus we will reduce just one num number uh, by one okay one number i mean let's say number is five we will reduce we will minimize okay we will subtract one okay from the five so five minus one the next number will be four right five let's say the number is five here then it will replace number five the first time it will give okay uh, if the it is true num is five is more or equal to one let's say num is five then five is more or equal to one that's true then it will okay, replace this one five into five minus one any four okay so it will repeat the process itself many times until the condition becomes false okay when it becomes false okay it will move here okay as condition uh, as statement this one and it will return simply one just one okay so this is how this one method is looping okay inside okay uh, let's move on again okay? uh, run the program so that you can sense it better way okay? so now we have complete program here okay and I will run the program so the factorial okay this program which is here right so the thing is okay we can compile first okay if it is not compiled. so usually okay it is compulsory to compile the program at first okay so that we can feel okay uh, that there is no problem inside the program if the problem exists then we have to okay uh, change the code maybe some syntax error some spelling error and other things okay we can uh, repair it and then run okay so running process is at the end first you need to compile so this is the symbol of compilation so we can compile okay from here and then after we can run it okay, like this way so let's yeah, just I'm keeping for clarity to understand that's all this indication is not in compulsory but it's good idea to keep it that's all so uh, if you want you can save it first and then run it otherwise it will be automatically saved first okay then compile okay let's move on so if I compile this program it will compile and give you okay some sense of any problem or something else okay. so now you can see uh, build was successful okay like this one so this means there's no error inside the program so let's run this program so we can run this program by coming to this point, okay? Run project. Or if you want to run entire project, but I want to run just this file. So the another method is just go to the file, factorial Java, okay? Just right click and run the program, right? From here. So you can see here there are many options, okay? So run test file and so on. So you don't need to worry about all these things just run the file okay run file and if you run the file you will get result nateja okay 
So factorial of 5, okay, is 120. This is the result from this okay, program. So up so now, so far so good, right? So is it okay? Everybody happy? Because the program is happy, right? So any problem? Is it okay? Yes. So uh, let's move on, okay, to the next one, okay? So, uh, okay, uh, one more thing we can do. We can do one more experiment. Let's say we want to replace and we want to know factorial of, let's say, I want to know factorial of 15. It is a longer process, but let's say for, for our testing purpose, uh, what will be the factorial of 15? Okay, We can test the program with whether it is okay or not. One more time, just click here, compilation. The process will take a little bit, okay? Longer, okay, that's okay. Now we have okay, build succeed. So right click on the factorial and file and then run the file okay, like this way. And see here, such a big number. That's why we keep this okay as long. Okay, can you see the factorial? The variable factorial is kept long if we put it in the type of the variable, it, it will create problem. So that's why we keep it as long, okay? Because we know uh, the factorials of some big number will be very, very big. So that's why we keep it as long, okay? Uh, this also, right? So anyway, uh, now we are happy that the program is happy. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one is about the summation okay summation of the any adding the numbers together adding the numbers one two three four and so on okay one plus two plus three plus four so adding the numbers is here okay so i will show you the program now so in this program okay uh, there are mainly okay uh two methods inside the class add number and inside the class add number okay the first one is uh, okay, that's better. I should also make indent. That's okay. So in the first, okay, uh, method, which is main, what is inside? Let's say inside the main, okay, we have, okay, a variable int, int type, which is called number. The variable name is number, which is put, keeping inside the box number, okay, the keyword. Ashra, 10. So the 10 is going inside the variable number. The se second variable is sum, okay, which is also integer type, that's okay. And it is taking the value from uh, another method, which is here, right? Another method that is add numbers, right? And it is uh, taking inside, uh, it is here, right? Taking inside some number and giving you some value, payment, and that value will go inside the sum variable, okay? And at the end, after we will have, okay, uh, this print statement, that system, uh, the class, then object, out, then print line, sum of this sum, this sum, okay? We put the value payment here. So what is inside, let's see, in this add number, so in the add number method, we have, okay, the argument only one parameter in now, and it will take just one number, and it will do something with this number, and return some in type, okay, result, natija. Okay, so let's move, okay, see here, uh, what is the if function for? So this I will make it better for you. Okay, that's all. Or even a little more indentation for you to understand, which is a part of this one, okay, method. So in this method, okay, uh, if condition is checked, 
whether the number is not equal to so if the number is not equal to zero means if it is other than zero okay okay then it will go to the next one uh, sorry it will return this one because the condition is true if the number is not equal to zero then if the condition is true that the number is not equal to the symbol, see the symbol not equal if the number is not equal to zero then it will give this value okay otherwise it will return simply num value okay whatever is entered by this okay, method so if the num is not equal to zero the condition then it will if it is true then it will return num plus add number now it is again repeating the same method okay so this time the new method uh, return value will be num let's say num is okay 10 the same one so what will be here num okay will be uh, is not equal to 10 is not equal to 0 then 10 plus add number the same method but this time the number will change here right so 10 minus 1 9 okay it will become 9 so it will work like we have initiated again repeated again add number 9 okay not the 10 the first time it was 10 okay, here the same value number okay the 10 uh, I mean where is this one? Uh, it will be like this okay the same one that's okay because we have entered the number here at the in the main fun in the main function in the main method okay so it will be the same okay at first time that's okay add number it will be the same so add number 10 and 10 will come here the first time second time it will be minus 1 so add number 9 third time add number minus 1 8 okay and it, it will repeat again and again the same method okay? iteration right and until the number becomes 0 so one by one if it is removing 1 all the time so at the end after it you will get result like uh, add number zero and when it becomes zero okay then the condition will become false okay and then it will return simply number okay that's all so this is how it is working the add number method okay so let's move and see okay the result it is almost the same way okay as the first one the factorial okay we are just adding the numbers together so where is this so let's run this okay add number uh, before running compile it first okay. let's say compile so we are succeed uh, we got the succeed success okay for this compilation let's run it okay just right click on the file add numbers and right click and run it run the file So we got finally the number 55, sum equal to 55. How? We are adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 4 plus okay, 5 and so on up to plus 10, the last number. So that's why altogether it gives the summation of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to plus 10, 55. Okay. Let's say I want to change this number, but don't okay write a so long number okay not a very big number if you write 1000 it will be a problem maybe okay so better to write small numbers because we have already put the variable in time not the long if you wish we can change it to the long that's okay but for the moment because we have declared it as type int so we have limitation to write the small number so we can write okay another number let's say for testing purpose uh, 15 okay and just compile it again that's okay and let's run it right add the number run it that's all now the summation is 120 
okay so we have added 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 up to plus 14 plus 15 okay like this way so the result is sum equal to 120 okay so this is your second program so let's move to the third program okay which is about the uh, Fibonacci, okay, but how many times we got the Fibonacci? I think factor. Ah, the first one was like factorial. That's okay. So I'm looking through your okay lab one by one and giving you uh, one by one all the program. So, so the third program is Fibonacci series. So it is here, right? Fibonacci series. So in the Fibonacci series, okay, uh, we have okay this class Fibonacci. Okay? And the class has uh, the same, okay, two method. Uh, the first one is actually we have written the main and the end. That's okay. And the first one is the method itself. So let's okay go to the first to the main function. Okay, what is inside? So inside public static void main, uh, we have first okay the Fibonacci. Okay, uh, sorry the system out okay print line this is statement uh, this statement will print the zero Fibonacci number the first Fibonacci number and it will take the value payment okay, of this uh, fib zero from here okay the first one so if I can go to the space that's okay now better so first it will go okay uh, up to here that's okay but here it will take the value increment of this fifth zero okay method uh, it will get the value increment from here right the, this method in the same way okay the second line line number 22 you can think like this this line okay at the time of printing it will take the value of fib 7 from the same function same method okay this one and in the same way okay the third one okay fib 12 it will take the same okay value i mean it will take the value from the same okay method fib okay fib 12 so every time only the changes are we are taking inside this method zero first time here okay the end will be zero first time here like this way see here and the next time okay uh, we are replacing n this n with seven okay like this and the third time we are replacing this n okay with the 12 number 12 so every time we are changing the input, okay, or we may say parameter argument, right, inside this fib 0, 7, 12, one by one. So let's say, let's see what is inside. It is simply uh, uh, an if function, if condition, that's all. So we are taking inside, okay, this uh, fib method n, okay, which is a variable. <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> which is a variable right so the variable is long type n and what does it do it takes okay uh, n here and check the condition so if function will check the condition with the n this n so first it will let me indent for you so that you can understand better that's okay so the first time okay it will check the condition that whether the n the let's say the number is zero where is zero uh, if the zero is equal equal to zero or this is the or symbol logical or this means if this condition is true or this condition is true if any of these two uh, is true right if any one of these true then we believe that the whole condition is true right so this R is in such a way that if the first condition is true and second is false, 
then still okay it is true overall so this condition the first condition or the second condition it will check the first condition or the second condition if any of them is true then the result will be true if any of them is false then still it will be true because let's say this is the false okay and this is a true then it will be true uh, only can when the both of them are false okay if the condition one is false and condition two is false okay then the whole condition will be false this is the meaning of this one okay so the condition one or condition two is true any of them then it will be true otherwise if the both of the conditions are false okay let's say condition one is false and condition two is false then the whole condition will be false okay so in that case it will go to this line okay if both of them are false then it will come here that's all okay otherwise it will run only this this line line number 15 right so let's move on so we are okay here uh, let's say n is equal to 0 in that case it will check the condition if n and 0 is equal equal to 0 or uh, which is true right so 0 is equal equal to 0 so let's say this is the true then it will not check that this condition that's okay because it got only one true and it's okay no problem it will move to the run uh, return n okay it will return zero that's all okay otherwise if let's say uh, seven okay is the number we pass n as seven so it will check the condition if seven is equal equal to zero which is false okay so it will go to the second condition 7 is equal equal to 1 no this is also not true okay so it will jump to this line and it will go for okay the same okay method it is repeating again fib 7 minus 1 6 okay plus 7 okay a fib 7 minus 2 which is 5 okay so 6 plus 5 so it will give okay the fifth seven as fifth uh, six plus fifth five and then both of the function i mean the method will repeat again and again okay in the same way so let's run it so that you can feel the sense of this okay program okay we got success run it now you can see the result right so zero step notch is zero okay the seventh from notch is 13 okay and the seventh from notch numbers number is 13 and 12 from notch number is 144 so remember I told you last time Fibonacci number start from 0 then it will become 1 and it will add the numbers before okay add two numbers before this, them so it will be 0 1 then 0 plus 1 will be 1 and 1 plus 1 okay these two numbers will become the next number 2 okay and 2 plus 1 the nail before this one okay the numbers which are before okay two numbers the two numbers before the series okay so two plus one okay will be three and so on five okay like this way so the same thing is here that's all so that's why we are getting okay the same things the first number is zero then the uh, seventh number is 13 and the twelfth number is 144 like this way so now we got the same thing okay so let's say I want to go for okay another line for our okay satisfaction so we are going for out okay 
this is the object and now we can access the method okay print line okay so we can choose the print line this one that's okay and inside the print line we are just writing uh, okay let's say we want to know uh, the f12 and then let's say we want to know 15th okay 15th Fibonacci. Ah, uh, sorry. In okay, Fibonacci. Okay, number is uh, what? What do you think? And we are just setting up these two strings together, uh, which is coming from the method fib, and we are just going to write it 50. That's all. Okay. So this is all about this. Uh, actually, okay, yeah, okay, that's okay. Okay, so let's compile it to see if there's some error. Nothing. So let's run it again. That's all. That's all. So the 15th, if I'm not the number, say how much? 610. That's a big number, right? That's a big number. So the only thing is we have to make a little space so that we can now okay, get very close, okay, numbers and the strings. So this is how you do it, right? Oh, okay. Uh, so everything is okay.